Alrighty guys, so I have just got out all the ingredients for some food that I'm gonna to make today. So uh, this is my final week before peak week. So I'll have three more days left of this week. Usually I'll have kind of pre-planned out what I'm gonna be doing for peak week, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure whether I need to get leaner or not. I need to take a good hard look at myself, do some photos, and I just haven't made the time. Once I actually know how I'm looking, I'll decide whether I'm gonna to start to kind of front load. That's my preference of peak week, where you're kind of reintroducing uh, carbohydrates at the beginning of the week, and then you know, you've got some time to kind of settle into those higher carbs and see how you're looking, and then you have time to make some corrections. But for this week, it's kind of business as usual, and I am pushing just on 1200 calories this week. So that's exactly what I am gonna be showing you today. It's like my last hard week of dieting and how I kind of incorporate a bunch of foods that still are very enjoyable to me, but in my opinion, are still very satiating and are going to get us a decent amount of dietary fiber. So on that topic, Let's quickly have a look at what this fiber target comes in at for the week. Based on everything that you're gonna to see today, this is 19.5 grams of dietary fiber on 1200 calories. It is voluminous. Um, I've really tried to make this go a long way. I'm not really using any kind of cheats products. I'm not adding supplemental Benefiber or psyllium husk or anything like that. It's just what is naturally present in these foods. There is one exception to that, which I'm gonna be using today in this waffle recipe that I'm about to show you. It's actually in the ice cream that I'm gonna be using. So that gets me like two grams or something like that. But for the most part, it's all just very nutritious whole foods. So the total amount of calories, first and foremost, that this exact day comes out at is 1196. Now there's some rounding in here. I'm targeting 145 grams of protein and this hits that on the head perfectly. It comes out to 109 grams of carbohydrate and 20 grams of fat. So it is on the lower end of the fat recommended range. But at this point, it's like I've got a few days left. For most of my prep, I've been so diligent with making sure that I'm trying to hit my, you know, a good amount of fats. We've talked about in previous weekly update videos, the importance of hitting or consuming a decent amount of fats from a hormonal perspective, from a functionality perspective, from absorption and bioavailability of all those fat soluble vitamins. There's a host of things. But in this case, I've got just a few days left. And, you know, as a competitor, this is just one of those sacrifices that you make. The advice that I would give to the everyday person on the other hand where there isn't a hard deadline would be that we could afford to take a little bit more time we wouldn't have to cram things we wouldn't be going this low because we'd have we'd give ourselves more time to kind of get to the level of condition that you want and you wouldn't be getting this lean anyway let's be real first recipe is going to be a apple cinnamon waffle so I've actually just started to preheat this waffle maker this is by far my favorite it's called an all clad it's pretty dense and heavy, but it's got four burners. You guys might've seen me use this in my recent check-in video where I did a nice savory waffle for you. I think it was like cream cheese, bacon, ham, egg whites, that kind of thing. The macros for the waffle on its own are 18.8 .8 grams of protein, 22.6 grams of carbohydrate, and 1.9 grams of fat, and four grams of dietary fiber, may I add. So very lean, you can add whatever you want to this. If you wanna make it savory, then you can have whatever the heck you want on it. I'm choosing some really light options today. In fact, the lightest that I could possibly find in the country. So I'm going to be adding this no added sugar apple pie filling. There are several different brands that you can use. I've got the uh, Duncan Hines, but I believe Great Value, Walmart, have a similar product with very similar macros for the same serving size. So this particular gem, and again, I gotta thank my girlfriend, Shelly Beatty, for finding these. There's also a cherry variety as well, if you like cherry flavor. But they have, for eight grams of carbohydrates, you get an 85 gram serving, which is the amount that you can kind of see here in this bowl. So it's decent and only eight grams of carbohydrate. So that's gonna kind of go on top for me today. And then I'm also gonna be using some really low calorie ice cream. So let's get started with this waffle, shall we? Ingredients, what have we got here? We have 20 grams of self-raising flour. So this is gonna make our waffle nice and I guess fluffy. Um, you could use plain flour if you don't have any self-raising uh, flour on hand, but it's not going to be quite as fluffy. You don't want a flat waffle, you know what I'm saying? Self-raising flour is the key. 
Um, and then I'm going to be adding in some um, baking soda as well. So two grams of baking soda to really help it to rise and make it nice and light and fluffy. I've got 10 grams of sweetener. This is sucralose. This one is easiest on my GI. As somebody that has IBS, there's a couple that if I have uh, erythritol, for example, like just forget about it. I think even people that don't have IBS, if you have too much erythritol across the course of the day, you're going to be farting your way to sleep. Like it's bad. <laughs> so sucralose to me is a really easy digested, low calorie sweetener option, better than sucrose if you're trying to modify or moderate your calorie intake. Over here in these two containers, I've now got um, some of our Outwork Nutrition Vanilla Protein Powder. Again, if you wanted to make this a chocolate waffle, you could just use our chocolate flavored Outwork Nutrition protein. So it's a way isolate, but because we're using a small amount, I don't mind using an isolate when I'm cooking in this particular situation. But if we're trying to make something that rises and has good texture, you probably wanna use a, a blend, something that's got casein and an isolate together because that means that there's going to be a little bit more carbohydrate and a little bit more fat and just the texture of your end product is less cardboard like <laughs> so i'm gonna stick with the isolate today just because i've got the macros to spare so if ideal world maybe i'd use one of the blends i've also got some coconut flour so 10 grams of coconut flour but you could use like an almond meal or something similar the macros are probably going to be pretty close, but again, there's gonna be some brand difference. So just take a quick peek at the labels before you go and dump it in and think that the macros are gonna be exactly the same. I've also got a little bit of cinnamon here. I will just use a little dash of cinnamon um, just to kind of enhance the nice apple flavor that I'm going for. And then the liquids that I'm gonna be using, I've got egg beaters. Um, so this is like an egg substitute. I don't think y'all folks in Australia they certainly didn't have it when I lived there. They might now, I don't know, but it basically tries to replicate the mouthfeel and color of actually a beaten egg, um, but with no fat, it's wonderful. Alternatively, you could just use like a liquid egg white, um, but you're just gonna have slightly lighter colored waffles. So mine will have a bit more of a yellow hue, but because the egg whites are clear, you're just not gonna have that um, yellow waffle that is, I guess, traditional for a waffle. The other liquid here is a cashew milk. So again, lowest calorie option I could find, the unsweetened version. It is this one, which is only 20 calorie, 25 calories for a serving. So it's basically negligible. In fact, it attributes a whopping nine calories in this recipe. But you could also just use regular cow's milk. Um, it'll probably have a nice taste if you use full cream milk, but you know, buttermilk, anything like that. Or if you wanted to add some extra protein, you could also just use 60 mils of pre-made ready to drink protein shake like this. So I'm just gonna literally dump that all in, whisk it up and then put it in my waffle maker. sure that um, baking powder is evenly distributed through the mixture so that you don't get clumping and ugly bubbles uh, in the middle of your waffle. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and put some milk in, eggs, and vanilla. I'm gonna add in about uh, one or two grams. Whisk. put a splash more liquid in here just so that it is a better consistency to put into the waffle maker. That was like five mils and that is perfect. Lane is leaving at the perfect time to miss out on waffles. <laughs> Got a podcast. See Bye. You for two minutes. <laughs> this is how much, like, that's the first time I've seen him today. Okay, so we need some oil to spray this down. So I'm gonna be doing two so we can stack them. 
top and bottom so that it doesn't stick. All right, so pop that in there. Try and get it in there evenly. Don't want to leave any games on the on the table, so we will scrape that out. Seriously, look at that. Look at look at the tiny amount I'm trying to get out here. This is so sad. This is what happens when you're dieting and every calorie is meaningful to you. And when you eat something that you don't like, it's like, I just wasted those macros. <laughs> Macro remorse, we refer that to. That's done. I'm just gonna close this up, make sure nothing busts out the back. Sometimes it happens. Cool, so we'll let that be. And I'm gonna get out the ice cream and show you the ice cream. <sighs> okay guys, these are the bomb. The macros for this salted caramel swirl are for a 77 gram serving, 21 grams of carbohydrate, five grams of fat and two grams of protein. So it's not as high as a regular, but keep in mind um, 10 grams of that sugar is a sugar alcohol. So it's meaningfully lower calories than if it was an actual sucrose, like a table sugar or fructose. So it's contributing lower calories. So that's a good one. I'm not gonna use that today because I don't even have those macros. And then the other one that I really like is just the plain good old vanilla. So the macros for this are 17 grams of carbohydrates of which eight grams are sugar alcohol. So again, instead of four calories per gram, it's probably more like one to two calories per gram. Um, two grams of protein and four grams of fat. So this is probably my preference. That's the one that I'm gonna use today on my waffle with um, the apple stuff. So yeah, I feel like this guy's nearly ready. I'm gonna get it a little bit more crispy and then I'll plate it up for you. Someone asked me the other day, like, oh, what are you um, most excited about to eat once you get done? I think I'm just most excited to a, get some energy back and like have my brain working and just being able to have whatever I want without such constant restriction. You know what I'm saying? We'll scoop it out so it shouldn't be sticky. If you've got a good waffle maker, it won't, won't leave you pulling half of it off. We are just gonna get it, get super fancy here. I'm gonna spoon that delicious apple right on the top there. Always lick the spoon. Like I said, we don't leave anything in the bowl, on the table. If it goes on the floor, that might be questionable, but I'd probably pick it up at this point. And I do need a scale for this because I would eat that whole thing if no one stopped me. Let's just, let's just see what 30 grams looks like. By the way, a serving size was 74. Oh my God, that's it. I don't even know whether I can be bothered. <laughs> Do I even want to eat this, guys? This is what 30 grams of ice cream looks like. That is 45 calories. It's a sad day. So we'll just pop that on there, make it look all pretty. I do have something else I can add to this to make it look nice. If you haven't put candied pecans or honey roasted pecans in your mouth or your pie hole before, you should. They're wicked, wicked bad. And that is it guys. This comes out at 256 calories. So that right there, 36 grams of carbohydrate and four grams of fat. This is my breakfast. It is a little bit low in protein, so 20 grams. I have already had just this morning about 100 mils of the salted caramel version of this, which took my kind of protein up for the morning to about 30, which is a more appropriate serving size for me and my protein target. So. That's it, I'm gonna eat this, and then you can see what I'm gonna eat next. Um, I am preparing my next meal now because I'm gonna be eating it on the run a little bit later, so. Builders, I'm like, yeah, let's just roll with it. So, let's go through all the ingredients and I'll tell you what I am having for my lunch. So it is an ahi tuna. Now you could do this seared warm or you could do it raw. Um, I'm not sure what I will have just yet, probably because I'm gonna be out on the road, I will have it raw, just because if I heat it up, it's gonna cool down anyway and 
it doesn't sound that appealing. So I'm gonna do um, an ahi tuna poke bowl. So I'm going to do this without rice to keep the calories low. This particular meal comes out to 324 calories. It is 43 grams of protein. Most of that is coming from the tuna, of which 36 is the tuna. 23 grams of carbohydrate and six grams of fat. And that's including the sauces that I'm going to be using today. So you have to keep a tight rein on these sauces because that is where the calories are coming from. I will definitely be getting the scale out just to make sure that I don't overfeed myself because that would be disastrous at this point in the game. So let's get a nice bowl out to plate this up. Probably should have got a smaller one. You know that there is actually some evidence to show that if you eat from a smaller bowl where it is looks full, like it actually helps with your satiety, but I don't have a smaller bowl at this point, so I'm gonna just make it with this one. So to start off with, I'm going to use um, some lettuce for kind of the foundations. So I have right here some butter lettuce. These are super fresh and cute. They are local literally just from the road or the farm down the road. So I'm gonna use that. And the amount that I'm putting in for today's salad is 75 grams. So we'll just cut, a, cut around the dish because it has just been freshly plucked. Give that a bit of a rinse. Just make sure there's no slugs, bugs, other animals that you may not wish to eat at the end of the day. Slugs and bugs are probably just adding a little bit extra protein. Probably wouldn't faze me at this point. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> that's got some calories in there. So you want to dry that off so that I'm not weighing all the water. Because I can't afford to be giving away calories to water <laughs> right now. So we'll just pat that dry. And we'll see what this weighs. Hopefully there's 75 grams. And there we go. Okay, so that's that's the, the base. And then I'm gonna go in, so this is some pre-made cauliflower rice. You can get these for like 99 cents a bag at Walmart. Um, you don't have to buy a specialty brand cauliflower's cauliflower at the end of the day. So I've got 75 grams. I'm just gonna sprinkle that kind of over the top. Okay, up next, we've got cucumber, which again is also 75 grams. This is honestly, like there's no specific amounts that you should or shouldn't be using here. It's honestly just to hit my macros because I don't really have a whole lot of flexibility at this point. So there we go. And radish, I think I have 20 grams. I'll put some color on there, it's super cute. Um, perfect. Up next, what have we got? Cherry tomatoes and red cabbage. So I've got 50 grams of red cabbage here. So we'll go ahead and pop that on. This is a little bitter. I might sometimes uh, choose to stir fry or saute this, but just because it is such a nice bold color and it's gonna have some sauce drizzled over it as well. Um, I'm actually totally fine to have this raw because it's going to just kind of take on the flavors and it's going to be sitting for quite a while. Um, so it's probably going to soften anyway, just with the sauces and the juice from the, the tuna. There's that. It doesn't sound very appealing as I'm describing this, does it? <laughs> and then I've also got some edamame for a vegetable. It is more calorically dense in carbohydrate than others. So for 25 grams, this has about four grams of carbohydrate and three grams of protein. So it doesn't look like, like much, but again, like at this point in the game, like visual aesthetics is so helpful for me enjoying what I'm eating. So it's so funny, like if I was not in prep right now, there's probably no chance I would have zoodled anything and I would be just plating it however I wanted. But it definitely helps to pay a little bit more attention to the presentation, just from that satiation point of view. Next, I'm gonna go in and pop some uh, cherry tomatoes. I think I had 25 grams. Let me just weigh those, yep. Spot on, spot on. So I'm just gonna like lightly dice those. Again, just so it goes a little bit further. Get some different colors in there. And then green onion, 20 grams.
perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you, I guess, the other final toppings and what I'm gonna use, and then I will show you how it looks when it's done. So this sauce here is absolutely gold. Um, it's difficult to find. Um, I don't know whether it's because everybody looks for it because it is the light version and there are very few yum yum sauces that are actually lower in calorie. A traditional kewpie mayo or like an aioli of sorts would probably set you back about 20 grams of fat, 15 to 20 grams of fat for a 28 gram serving, like a, a heaped tablespoon. So, so calorie dense. Like this could be a really low calorie meal. You put this on it, forget about it. Like it's now, you may as well have had a burger. That's how fatty this is. So a lot of calories in here. And again, this is why I kind of stress the importance of kind of weighing these types of things out because that can often be the reason that people plateau in their weight loss. You know, they think that they're eating low calories, but either they're having something that is mixed in oil or butter or they're condiments are like skyrocket high fat. So I've allowed uh, for 10 grams of this yum yum sauce. And then the other product that I really like using, I'm not gonna use this today because it's got garlic and onion in it. Uh, and I value my GI at the moment, but this is a poke um, sauce and a marinade. So this has 11 grams of carbohydrate for a 24 gram serve. For this particular recipe, I've allotted 10 grams for this particular sauce. Or if you are somebody that has IBS and wants a low FODMAP option, I'm going to be using the Korean barbecue sauce by Foddy. It is really good. It doesn't have any garlic and onion um, and it still has a reasonable flavor that I think when I pair it with this is going to taste just fine, but I'll actually get a 30 gram serve of the Foddy sauce because it's much lower in calories. So the calories will come out the same regardless of which um, option you use. It's just that this only you get 10 meals for the Foddy version, I'm gonna get 30 mils out of it. So for this particular recipe, I'm gonna be using 150 grams. So let's go ahead and plate that up. If I can get it open without breaking anything. Zero my scale out. And I reckon we probably have about eight of these. So each individual piece, just for the record, so we're at 30 grams. So they're about 15 grams a piece. And one more bit should do the trick. Perfect. Dead on, 150. I'm gonna come in over the top here. Bit of salt. A Little bit of decoration. So these are just black sesame seeds, nothing super crazy and then we'll go in with our delicious sauces so what i'm going to do is just pour this into the corner so i can get a nice thin drizzle like so and then you just kind of spin it off like that and you find yourself a knife cut the top off And just make sure that I've got that zeroed out before I do anything. Just gonna drizzle that over the top. And sadly folks, that's 10 grams. That's it, that's all you get. Suck it up, buttercup. And then Korean barbecue for the win. This is the Foddy sauce that I was talking about. No garlic, no onion, it's a lifesaver and I get 30 mils of this. So let's pour that over the top as well. Give it a bit of flavor. Keep it going and there's our 30 mils. If you wanted to guys, you could also be a cheetah and grab yourself some seaweed salad. I love this stuff, it's so good. I used to like look at it and be like, hi in God's name, would you wanna eat that? But I think as I have started to kind of compete more regularly, it's funny how your flavor profile and your taste preferences change. Like you become more tolerant, I guess, but it's also encouraged me to kind of be more creative with my cooking and flavors. And I actually, I still outside of contest prep now, like I enjoy this. Um, so it kind of helps you develop certain habits and eating behaviors 
that are favorable for you to help you maintain a leaner physique, if that's important to you, you know, kind of indefinitely, rather than just kind of bouncing back and forth between things that you don't like and then things that are really highly palatable, but also really energy dense. So definitely worth kind of putting yourself through a more serious fat loss phase because it can help you get a bit more creative, um, learn to cook, most importantly, I think that was one of the things that have really helped me develop my skills in the kitchen because I just don't want to eat something that tastes like rubbish, like truly. Like if I had to eat the same thing every single day, I would probably explode or I wouldn't you know, be able to get to the, the condition that I have. So this is it guys. This is just wonderful. Just looks like a bowl of joy. Absolutely delicious. Can't wait to eat this a little bit later today. So give it a try. Super simple. Did not take me that long. Hey guys, change of scenery, hotel room afternoon snack. It's got a kitchen. <laughs> so but before I jump back into work, I'm going to have my third meal to the day. So starting off with some super thick and creamy fat free Greek yogurt, zero fat, amazing five grams of carbs, 18 protein for 170 grams. Sir. So I'm going to have 180 grams of this kind of what I've mapped out. In here, I have some vanilla protein isolate, our Outwork Nutrition product. So that's gonna go in to add some extra protein and then it's also going to be adding some nice vanilla flavoring. Um, and then I'm gonna mix that together and literally just add it on top of these rice cakes, which I'm gonna have two. And then I'm going to top five grams of this amazingness coconut cream pie seasoning guys it is the bomb they also have a honey um a honey butter um seasoning as well which is really nice um i guess if you eat sweet potatoes and you want to have some butter and some cinnamony flavors this is also nice for desserts and then last but not least adding in these little honey roasted pecans oh my god there's a reason they are in this container already weighed out because i know if i have the bag around me a whole bag will be consumed <laughs> so i weighed those out and got out of the house as quickly as i could so i'm gonna whip that up put it together and then i'll show you what it looks like so let me find a spot where there's actually light um this is super thick and creamy i mean i can just let that hang out here it's like pudding so shouldn't be sliding off your rice cake let's go ahead and really rough it just got to have some really nice filming in my house and now here's me on my phone yeah that's not gonna work all right i'm just gonna film this for you get it together and then i'll show you <laughs> the finished product okay catching the last of the sunlight <laughs> so that's it guys, just an easy afternoon snack. I'll pop the macros on the screen here for you. Um, I think that you're gonna really enjoy it. So this is the Courtney Campbell Causeway. And it just goes and goes and goes. It goes and goes. <laughs> so there's a beautiful big bridge coming up here that you can't quite see yet, but I love to walk this area, I ride it. Lane and I will often bring our bikes down, um, set them up and do a nice big one hour ride. But it's just so nice. And at this time of the morning, it's kind of perfect. It is a new day and guess what? I didn't get to film all of my full day of eating, which is no surprise. I feel like this happens every time I try and do one of these. It's just, I didn't get to bed last night until I don't know, like quarter to 12 and I think my last meal I had at about 11 o'clock again. So I'm definitely evenly distributing my protein throughout the day. It's just not quite in my normal uh, eating window. So what I'm going to do, and my word, I hope you can hear me right now because it's very noisy. I'm kind of walking out as a highway just here. Um, I'm going to show you what I had for dinner, but with some daylight. So. I think I showed you my last one. Uh, it was probably about, I guess, at 8:30 p.m. when I had my Greek yogurt with the coconut cream pie, like um, flavoring and the vanilla. Um, so I'll show you the next meal when I get back inside. I'll, I'm going to have that again today for breakfast. 
so that you can see what I had. Um, and it was actually quite a satiating, satiating day actually, considering uh, how low my calories were. So um, stay tuned, I'm gonna finish my walk. Um, I've actually just done uh, one hour almost um, of walking and I kind of listened to some motivational, um, I guess, uh, clips and uh, some self-development stuff like habit change. Uh, I'm really into that. So uh, I've been enjoying a couple of different things. I might even put some links down in the description for you to see kind of what I listened to, but I listened to a great one this morning um, about habits uh, versus uh, I guess setting goals, um, which was really, really good. So I'll link that and I'll be showing you my next meal here in a few minutes. Okay guys, as promised, I wanted to show you the last meal that I would have had a couple of days ago now to kind of take me up to my 1200 calorie target. So this next meal, you've seen something pretty similar, uh, I think in one of my earlier videos for a full day of eating. Um, but I just want to show you a couple of different options that you can do with this meal that is super easy uh, and very macro friendly for those of you that are currently trying to adhere to a fat loss phase. So this last meal, my evening meal, uh, comes out at about 283 calories. It is 41 grams of protein. It is a staggering 19 grams of carbohydrate, haha, -ha, obviously that's a joke, uh, and five grams of fat. So very uh, light on calories. This is definitely a high protein, very low carbohydrate, very low fat meal. So I've actually just stopped out at the grocery store because I have run out of my supplies and I picked up a couple of things to kind of make this. So this particular recipe, I'm actually going to be using the cod loin. So this is just a green wise brand. They are frozen fillets. They cook through really nicely. I usually do these in the air fryer or the oven. Uh, but you could also grill them but i prefer the slower cooking methods just because it kind of preserves that nice texture because it is so lean if we kind of quickly fry things it's going to kind of make this meat probably a little bit too chewy and i obviously prefer, prefer things to be you know nice and palatable especially this late in contest so I'm prepared to cook things a little slower uh, if it means that they come out uh, the way that I want them to taste. So these are really lean. There's 20 grams of protein, one gram of fat, obviously no carbohydrates and it's just a protein source. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. But if you're not a big seafood fan, like there's nothing magic about seafood. It's just a very lean protein source. So you could also use some of this ground turkey. So the macros are almost exactly the same. In fact, they almost, they're almost identical. Um, the serving size for these is a little bit bigger, but for 112 gram serving, the cob was an 85 gram serving. Uh, this is 27 grams of protein, 1.5 grams of fat, and obviously no carbohydrate. So you could easily uh, use this instead. Um, and the other alternative for protein sources that I think kind of fry up really nicely in the frying pan would be either like your turkey breast or a chicken breast. I've chosen the ones that aren't kind of flavored. This particular one is coated with uh, paprika and chili powder. I try to avoid any of the um, lean deli meats that are flavored with garlic and onion for obvious reasons, IBS. I just don't want to have to deal with the consequence. Like, I don't know, you can see here, like right now I have nice flat abs. I look like I'm about to get on stage. I guarantee you, if I ate some garlic and onion right now, I would look like, like this. It would be just miserable and uh, it's very psychologically like difficult to see that when you're so close to getting on stage. So anyhow, um, something else that you could use is just like a basic honey ham. So this is also very lean. Uh, it has 12 grams of protein for a 56 gram serving. So a little bit smaller serving size and only one gram of fat and one gram of carbs. So that's also something else that you could use um, in addition to like an extra lean ground beef or if you can take the time to dice up like a sirloin or a filet and then you can have like um, sauteed um, beef as an option. So. Let's get stuck into this. I'm gonna go through all the ingredients. So to start off with, I'm gonna use um, 200 grams of the um, cod fillets. I'm going to be using 10 grams of, I can't believe it's not butter. Um, you guys have seen me talk about that uh, in previous full days of eatings. It's just a very light alternative to a regular butter. 
Um, it has that kind of nice mouth feel, but obviously significantly lower calories. We're gonna be using 100 grams of both yellow squash and zucchini. I'm also gonna be using some kale, but in a much smaller quantity. So I've got this pre-chopped kale, which I'll actually go back through and chop it a little bit more because there's some, there's kind of a lot of like big bits in here and no one wants to eat an entire stalk because that is nasty. <laughs> and I'm also going to be doing uh, 30 grams um, of red cabbage as well. So both the kale and the cabbage will be 30 grams. And then I picked up some cherry tomatoes, 50 grams of these guys. And then I also picked up some pre-made red peppers or mixed peppers. So um, super convenient. I actually did bring my knife kit from home with a spare one, just in case I didn't have knives. But I'm also, I'm just like, oh, they have chopped peppers. I'm getting those instead this week. So 50 grams of the peppers, and then I'm gonna be using, let me grab it, probably one of these um, sauces to saute the veggies in. So again, this is the Foddy brand that I've been telling you guys about, which is phenomenal for people that suffer with IBS. No garlic, no onion. So this is your Chipotle. And then this one is a taco seasoning. So there's uh, several different varieties. Like I mentioned in my last video, they are a little bit more expensive after you add the shipping, because you're not these aren't something that I've been able to find, certainly not in stores near where I live. So I have to order them online. So just the shipping costs make these expensive. I think they're probably like $5 for a bottle, which is similar to what some of the other sauces are that I've purchased in stores. But once you add the shipping, it's like, oh, I just paid $10 for that. But it is worth it, honestly. Like I used to try and like fight my IBS and be like, oh yeah, I can have a little bit of that. I can have a little bit of that. And like, it would just ruin me. And until I started taking it seriously, I was like, wow, my, my world has changed. Like my quality of life has improved out of sight. Like I'm no longer walking around in pain. And you know, it used to make me miserable. Like, you know, dieting was hard enough and now add in like all these other GI problems. It just well, wasn't worth it anymore. So thankfully I started to take things a little bit more seriously and I am a happier person for it. So I'm gonna get stuck into preparing this and then I'm gonna show you the finished product. Okay, fish is cooked. I cooked that at about 380 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 minutes. And then this is now done as well. I'm just gonna serve it up and yeah gonna be great okay so this is going to be or would have been my dinner meal and I just wanted to say really quickly I think something that has really helped me over the years as I've you know become more advanced and experienced as a competitor is finding foods and meals that I truly love and enjoy I used to try and take shortcuts I would have protein bars because they were sweet and tasty uh, and I would make lots of just protein shakes and things like that. Kind of like the cheetah's way of doing things. And what I kind of realized after, you know, a couple of years of trying to incorporate those types of things was they just weren't satiating. So it was like, how can I, you know, hit my protein targets, but also still feel full and enjoy my food. So it wasn't until I really started experimenting with like all of the different colors and flavors that, you know, I actually was able to be more compliant to my nutrition target. So like you'll notice in a lot of the things I'm eating, there's a lot of color. You do tend to be a little bit more food focused, the leaner you get. Um, and I do spend more time kind of preparing something like this, especially making the presentation look good. That's not something that I would worry so much about in my kind of off season. If I was gonna eat this, I'd probably just slap it together. It wouldn't bother me. It'd be just quickly grab and go. But you know, all those little things are important and have certainly been a huge contributing factor to my success on a diet. And I don't think I really valued that when I first got started you know I just like I said I would just look for all the sweet things like it was like oh flexible dieting that means I can eat anything I want and you know I try eating all of the junk foods and things and incorporating them but yes you can still do that but it's certainly not something that you want to have making up the bulk of your dietary or calorie intakes because they do not fill you up okay so that's it um, I added some lemon juice, chili flakes, um, and a lot of salt and pepper to the fish. Uh, and then I also actually squeezed in a little bit of the um, sweetener over the veggies as well as lots of salt and pepper and the taco sauce that you saw. 
Um, so it's kind of like sweet and spicy and sour at the same time. So this is such a staple for me. If it's not fish, it's beef or it's chicken or it's ham or turkey breast. It could be anything. Um, and I think, you know, paying attention to the colors and things like that have really it helped me enjoy it and my food so much more. So guys, if you are struggling with um, adherence, maybe the reality check is you've got to spend a bit more time, you know, learning how to cook and experimenting with these things so that you can find stuff that you enjoy because it doesn't have to be basic and boring and miserable and it doesn't have to be chicken and broccoli like, you know, it's often kind of made out to be, but it does require a little bit of your time and investment.